Cato's Alex uh, Naurasta, who is an immigration liberalizer, uh, had a pretty good uh, Twitter thread over the weekend um, contextualizing all of this stuff. And uh, even in the middle of that, he had this following thing that caught my eye, quote, the immigration court backlog is currently about 3.3 million. Those migrants are going to be waiting, working, and living in the United States for a long time, and many won't leave even if the court orders them to go, end quote. That's just crazy untenable, isn't it? I mean, not just as a as a kind of practical thing, but uh, certainly as a political thing. Yeah. I mean, Alex is basically always right about everything with respect to immigration. I, I associate myself with him. I can't think of a time that he's been wrong. So um, I think that, you know, his persistent efforts to point out what the status quo really is um, are really important. Like they're here. They're already here. And and that's, again, why I think this invasion language is so weird and so unhelpful. It's It's not it's not like. This isn't a Mars attacks situation. It's not a Mars attack situation. And, uh, you know, the Martians are already <laughs> among us, I guess. And it's fine. Um, it's more like Alien Nation, which was oh, itself an extended sci-fi parable about immigration assimilation. Great right. movie with Mandy yeah. Katinkin. So as with actual aliens, when when they come, we would be better off to welcome them, to talk with them, to have them. Uh, you know, to treat them with respect, uh, to not have them risk their lives to come here. Uh, I can't I can't speak to how the actual alien invasion is going to go, but we already know what happens when we let people in. And, uh, you know, when we let people in in a as you know, Nick is correct to know that the border is a mess. But one solution, which I know is not on the table right now in our current political climate, but like one solution, one way to prevent a a messy, deadly, confusing, politically polarizing, playable disaster at the border is to just let people come here, to just make the doors of legal entry, like to throw them open wider. And it doesn't mean we have to let every single person come here, although I think Maybe that would still be the way, honestly. But the vast majority of people once, who I don't mean, have communicable yeah, if we, diseases if we and don't have, have y'all with have your criminal asterisks. histories. Take your asterisks and leave. Like yeah. I, I like I just think in the end, uh, if if we are looking for a solution to this truly horrible situation, both at the border and all these people who are living within the country who are being told at any time, you know, maybe your status will be revoked, maybe you will have to be thrown out. Maybe you'll have to choose between staying where your life is and going into hiding or going back to a place that you left for a reason. Um, I, I just think that we could just choose more openness. That is really an option and I think the only morally defensible one. But I also think a really pragmatic one. I, I genuinely think that this is doable. Um, and Alex, as usual, has like some excellent concrete steps that we could take, including stuff like you know, getting the you – know, simplifying and speeding up the – the paperwork backlog for people who are already here. One of the points that Alex makes in that post that is very good is that this is a demand issue. And this is a demand side issue because the U.S. economy is in some ways, especially with regards to the job market, actually doing pretty well. Um, and, and like there are there are a lot of job openings, especially for lower skilled labor. And so people want to come here. And so to me, the, the operating metaphor here is not um, movies from the 1990s about um, alien detectives or or um, alien invasions. Instead, it's prohibition. And and people resist this metaphor when it comes to immigration because they see it as something fundamentally different. But it's really this. It's really very similar in so many ways because there is a demand for something. Um, it, with prohibition, it was alcohol. Uh, with immigration, it is good jobs and a better life for your family. And that demand is not going to go away just because you cr try to put an artificial barrier in, in the way of it, right? Instead, people are going to try, um, they're going to try to get it through means that are more dangerous and more chaotic. And it's going to create a secondary market in violence and criminality. That is what happened in Prohibition. And it's what what is happening with the border. And if you want to tamp down on crime and if you want to uh, make it harder for, uh, for for people, for gang members and violent people to come in uh, to cross the border, then what we need to do is we need to say people who are obviously peaceful and just want to come here and work and contribute to the economy, they can come in. And there's an easy and straightforward process for them to do that. And then we're going to focus our efforts on catching the actual bad guys who want to come over here and do bad stuff. It'd be nice to hear a president 
you know, who has the bully pulpit, really come out and say exactly that, that we're a nation of immigrants uh, and that everybody who wants to live and work peacefully is welcome here. It does cause disruption. We're going to meter it out. So it's not, you know, like a billion people coming in the first year or anything like that, but we're going to expedite it. Right now, as much as anything, and this is true not just of immigration, but it's true of economics, it's true of foreign policy, we don't have a national meta narrative of like, what is America about? And as a result, you start to see uh, people knock off things. Uh, Force Republicans to say that they don't want anybody new in the country because things are perfect the way they are. Force left wingers to admit that we cannot admit people and, you know, that not that this happens, but it's the fear. You can't just bring in a lot of people who are immediately going to go on welfare rolls, which, by the way, if we continue with current asylum policy, if you bring people in and they can't work, that's like fucked up beyond belief. Let people come here and live and work openly and honestly. They don't get welfare. They don't necessarily get citizenship, but they do get legal status and they're going to move into the parts of the country where there are opportunity. And that will take care of all sorts of problems rather than cause any. But we, we need to be talking about why immigration is important to the country, not just in economic terms, uh, but also in kind of national and identity terms. And we also need to talk about the, the fears that people have where, you know, part of this is a larger anxiety that's throughout the country in all different ways about the future, about how things are shifting radically out of the world that most of us grew up in and didn't like when we had it, we wanted it to change. But now we look back nostalgically as if, you know, the 1970s uh, when immigration was very low is somehow a good thing. I mean, fashion, yes, it was a great thing, the 1970s. And it's pretty good in music, underrepresented, yeah. Uh, Prog the- rock and bell bottoms, bring them back. Matt likes the colors. Elephant, elephant bottoms, bell bottoms, eh, yeah, elephant bottoms. Nice. 